Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler and a very, very warm welcome to the channel. This is the second final game out of a total of four that is being played between Aronian and Ding, the two players who reached this final. The first game, dare me say, was a bit of a disappointment because both players played it dead safe. Game two has not yet started, but it will in a few minutes. You know, by the time I edit this one, it's going to be hours before I can upload this game because it does take time to finish the game, upload it and get the thumbnail and so forth. Making these clips are not easy and requires plenty of knowledge. But if you are involved in editing, you don't need me telling you this. Anyway, I'm going to run you through game two as it is being played. It doesn't leave me with much time to analyze but when I see something that needs attention, rest assured, I will be dealing with it. I'm just waiting for the game to start. Both players are seated and we just saw the first handshake. Lear and White got underway with d4 and with knight of 6, c4, e6, g3, d5, bishop g2, and bishop e7, the Catalan, after knight f3, the game continued with castles, followed up by castles, and after the c-pawn was removed, Liren came up with this queen to c2 move. a6 prepares b5, but a4 stops this from happening. You know, if we didn't know who was playing what colour, you wouldn't really be able to tell, because Levon himself plays this exact same line with the white pieces. Bishop d7 got the queen to recapture and now the solid bishop c6. Ding got the bishop to g5 but did this bother Levon? Well his follow-up move answers this question. He went for a5 and we already know what Levon is up to. He wants to get initially the knight to a6 with the idea of repositioning to b4 and once he's on b4, this will be a very lovely and safe place to put him on. With knight c3 and now knight a6, Liren got in with e3 and here we saw that knight b4 move, cementing the knight on this square. Rook d1 led to the other knight to evacuate the f6 square to provoke white to make a move on the king side. Liren exchanged the bishop, but just look how strong this knight is on b4. With e4, Liren got the music going, and now with rook d8, Liren went for rook d2, just to stop, at least for now, the knight reaching this c2 square. Knight b6 was Levon's first serious threat, and now we know the queen needs to evacuate the c4 square. Queen e2 is a good square to put her on and we are just waiting to see if this move is played. And indeed, this was not a very hard move to go for. Mind you, getting the queen in on b3 is not that bad either, but the only thing about this is that it restricts the queen's movement. Ding is taking a bit too long here. He just burned 9 minutes and still has not decided what to go for. And this explains fully why we saw earlier the players going for this opening very fast to spend time on certain positions that matter. I'm just waiting for Ding to make a move and after, what, 11 minutes and 39 seconds, he did go for this most obvious of moves, Queen E2. Was that an unnecessary waste of 11 and a half minutes? In the meantime, let me bring you up to date with some basic facts. Levon and Liren, with eight games between them, Aronian has not even been able to beat, Le to beat Liren once. With five draws, this also means Ding Liren has won Levon three times. If you look at the facts already, you begin to see how serious, or if you like, how obvious, or let me say how unpredictable this final is. Anything goes here, and if you didn't consider Ding Liren to be a serious, incredible contestant, 
just consider it. With Le Bon to play, he went for bishop e8, and this move tells us what he's up to. That c pawn is going to be thrusted forward. Having covered the a pawn with b3, to be able to free up the a rook, Le bon went for the c push, and this game is close. Very close. If you take on c5, is this move playable? Any takers in 2, 1 and pause. I can't see why you can't go for it, because after rook takes and queen recaptures, rook d8 looks strong, but if you get the queen to let's say f4, this move does invite the knight to come in on d3, and though the knight on b6 is hanging, before white is able to do anything, he would need to deal with the threat on his queen first. Queen e3 is asking for queen takes c5, and though the game is intense, it is still equal. Levon never intends to go for an exchange because it allows the knight to retake, and with the knight being on a much better square, I'm sure Aronian would not want to see this position on the board. And this is the very reason for bringing into the game the only piece that was inactive. Rook c8 is what he went for. But what if he went for this c4 move instead? Just to break up white's pawn formation. Taking on c4 is not an option because it runs into the deadly knight takes c4. Okay, it wasn't to be. Liren responded with rook c1 and probably expect Levon to, to now go for a c4 push. By looking at Levon's time, is it the very first time in the game moving beyond the 50 minute mark and this is why where you can to play fast in the opening stages of the game to allow you plenty of time to think of your next move. After 17 minutes and 53 seconds, Aronian does indeed go for c4 and nearly instantly Liren goes for d5. And here is where it all starts. With the b knights being exposed, I fear we're going to see the queens coming off. Queen c5 covers the knight and now giving Liren very little choice, the queens came off. Immediately taking on e6 led to the taking of the rook and here I'm going to ask you to consider what to go for next. Do you take the rook first or do you come in with a check? Coming in with a check first spells disaster for white because of this combination. Once the bishop recaptures, yes a pawn is a pawn but after knight takes and the pawn removes the b pawn Knight e2 is going to drop the pawn on a4 and white is busted. Whether you go for the removal of the rooks after knight c3 and a4, the attack is way too strong to be stopped and black wins this one very easily. So this pretty much explains why white bypassed the taking with a check and grabbed the rook first. Knight d3 is as good as taking the pawn on e6. Aronian went for the second option and here with a very badly positioned bishop who's hindered by his own pieces, Liren got him back to f1. Once the c and b pawns abandoned the game, the threat on the rook pushed him back to c7 and now with the taking of the pawn on a5, Levon in turn grabbed this pawn on a4. Knight a2 led to the forced removal of the rooks and now through knight c5 to cover the pawn on b7, forget covering the e pawn. Ding opted for knight b3 and though this game may look simplified, with both having retained the knight pair and the same colour bishops, this game is extremely complicated. b6 led to the knight exchange and now we have the biggest of questions. Can this A pawn do the damage? If only Levon can find a way to run him all the way to A1 without being captured, this will be perfect. There is a huge difference what knight you take. Needless to say, Levon went for the right knight by taking the knight on the left. And here is where the tactics kick in. Bishop c4 is very obvious. 
Levoy knew all too well the pawn on e6 cannot be saved and went for a pawn push to a4. Miraculously, the pawn on e6 was not taken. Ding activated the king and now with another push to a3, Liren began to feel the nerves. He went for knight b3 just to ensure this a pawn never makes it to the first rank. Liren has plenty of time to make time control but this knight b3 move seems to be problematic. Levon has 10 minutes more than Liren and takes nearly 40 minutes to make his next move. He went for bishop a4 and trust me, the whole game can depend on the few remaining moves. Liren came up with knight c1, allowing Levon to retain his chances winning this game. But this end game is one of the most difficult ones to work out. Bishop c2 bypassed the check by taking on e6 and Ding chose to get his king into the action. A move that drops the pawn on e4. A follow up check by taking on e6 led to king f8 and Liren brings his king closer to the extremely dangerous pawn situated on a3. King e7 attacked the bishop and this bishop needs to find a good square on the board. Liren hasn't got many options but the bishop needs to stay on the a2 diagonal and preferably on the south side of this board. He got the bishop back to b3 and now with knight d5, knight e2 and king d6, Liren attacked the bishop. Mind you, this move is just to deflect the bishop from the diagonal. Even if the bishop takes on f3, it's absolutely fine because you can easily continue with knight d4 and even if you try this sneaky a2, the capture on a2 will get the bishop back to e4 and the game is very equal. Having attacked the bishop with the king, the bishop returned to g6 and through knight d4, the game is all about this a pawn and if Levon can manage to promote him. The most obvious move to go for here is to get the knight in on c3 and I'm just waiting to see if Aronian is going to go for it. He didn't. He returned the knight to c7. A very, very deep move indeed. It looks like this knight move to c7 is a wasteful move, but it's not. First of all, it stops the knight from forking the king and pawn, and you don't need a second reason for Aronian's knight move to c7. By the way, knight c3 would have done exactly the same thing. Once the knight returned to e2, I think it was going to go downhill for Ding Liren. King c5 led to knight f4, and now with the bishop finding f5, Liren attacked him. Bishop d7 led to the very surprising g5. I'm expecting Levon to return the bishop to f5, but does he? Nope, he went for knight b5. The game continued with the very wild bishop g8, and it was here where Levon returned the bishop to f5. Knight h5 led to the attack of the knight, and goodness me, what a game this is. With the knight having been pushed to g3, after the bishop came in on e3, the bishop removed the h pawn, and now with a knight finding a much stronger square, it wasn't until Aronian let the knight come in with a check when the young Armenian got his king closer to his a pawn. Taking now the pawn on g6 is not going to be good news for white because once the knight kicks in with a check, king d1, which is in fact the only legal square available, what do you think happens when the pawn finds a2? Boom. It's done. Ding Liren here came up with all the right moves. He ignored the pawn on g6 and went for bishop to g8. Having now removed the f pawn, the knight was exposed and by pushing this knight back to f6, the game was leading to one result. Knight takes g5 is a win for black, but there is still plenty of work ahead, I think. Since the pawn on g5 was guaranteed, Aronian got his king back to c5 and now with h3 and king to d4, 
the bishop returned to a2 and now with the removal of the pawn on g5 Liren went for h4 knight e4 got the knight to d7 and expect here to see Aronian finishing off through knight c3 bishop f7 and now a check on e2 is all Aronian needed king d2 knight g1 and bishop back to a2 f4 on f3 is final because once the h pawn is down you tell me how this g pawn is going to be stopped having gone for the knight through c5 got the knight back to f6 and once the king went after the knight knight d5 got the bishop to f5 and aronian was doing something very wrong knight e3 led to a check but you need to admire ding Lirens's guts to go for this move any ideas king to c2 allowing for a double check when that knight landed on b4 and with any situation involving a double check you do really need to move your king king b3 led to the removal of the two minor pieces and now with the king going after the knight knight c2 led to the king chasing after the h pawn and through knight d4 king g4 and king takes once the king took on h4 this game has draw written all over it king b2 led to king g3 and now with king c3 king f2 king d2 and bishop g4 Liren came up with knight c2 g5 knight e3 and only when the knight got in and only when the knight got a grip on d5 bishop g4 knight f6 bishop f5 and king d1 aronian knew he was just unable to push that pawn down the board and the game led to a draw and these are the games everyone wants to see though we saw two draws there is no comparison between these two games of course aronian had this one in the bag but time and time again Dean Liren knows exactly how to get away with murder. And with two games to go, the heat is on. I will keep you updated as we go along. And on this note, many thanks for taking part. And many, many, many thanks for watching. This was your Chess Puzzler.